Hello, my friends, and welcome back to The Witcher 3, the Blood and Wine DLC. In our last video, we worked on the main quest, A Man from Sintra, and had this very awkward cut mid-conversation with Henrietta and Oriana, but Oriana has gotten up and left. So we're going to pick back up here and, and go from there. So what do you think about Oriana on Henrietta? Oriana, any thoughts? Few make me feel awkward. But in her presence, I sense anxiety, discomfort. Something familiar about the drawing? The drawing of the jewel that they found. I forget what the jewel was called, but anyway. The drawing. It's on the same type of paper the victims' names were written on. Oh. Drawn with the same ink, too. Seems the work of our blackmailers. Who were not only behind the beast's murders, but also stole the Son Real and sought to steal the heart of Toussaint. Okay. Look, the wine, the jewel, both tied to you intrinsically. Coincidence? Not something I'm willing to believe. Worried about one thing, that somewhere at the end of this scheme, plan might call for an attempt on your life. It... it could be something else altogether. Such as? My sister, Siana, might be among the schemers. She left court when we were children. My parents banished her from the duchy. I've not seen her since. Why was she banished? That does explain, what was it? We read some book and then a revised version where it was, it talked about uh, what was her sister's name again? Sienna. Uh, so it talked about Sienna and Anna Henrietta, and then the revised version just talked about Anna Henrietta. So why was she banished? What did your sister do to get banished? Sienna was cursed. Parents run afoul of some mage? No. She was born at an inopportune moment. They said she was touched by the curse of the Black Sun. Geralt, is it true? Can an individual be evil because they were born during the wrong lunar phase? Could be the case. Could also be because they were treated like lepers from birth. Isolated, prodded, ostracized. Couldn't have had it easy, Sienna. She... She was angry at the whole world. She felt inferior, felt pain. Though she masked this with confidence, arrogance even. She could also be cruel at times. I recall one such situation. She persuaded Cedric the Coolbert that she could see the future in her dreams. We were children, and Cedric's brother was smitten with me. It was an innocent childhood crush. Sianna knew of it. She told Cedric of a dream she had had, that he would die at the hands of his own brother. Cedric stole his father's sword and killed his brother. She destroyed two lives with a prank. Cedric mourns to this day. In the end, they forced her to leave the palace. A decade passed, more. I've missed her terribly since. Did you not go look for her? I mean, like, your sister doesn't sound like she's all there. I mean, that's a pretty awful prank. Like, person died. <laughs> um, but, like, you're in charge now. Go look for your sister. It's fine, whatever. Um, do you think she's involved? Think your sister might be involved? Why? You see, I recall her always being rather... Possessive, throwing jealous fits if I had something she didn't. Here, yeah, that's normal for sisters. Rivalry. Mm -hmm. True. I suppose I gave as good as I got. There are times I miss that very much. The wine, its theft was the first clue. That's very much like her. She always did enjoy stealing my toys. But I grew almost certain when I saw the heart of Toussaint. Siana received it from father as a gift. At a time when my parents thought of her as but an ill-behaved little girl, someone wanted some of my wine. The same someone ordered our family jewels stolen, or recovered. It's my sister. It must be. 
A fallen princess satisfying whims, going after lost luxuries? Hmm, could be right. Your mission has gained new import. You must go to Dun Tyne, and if Siana is there, you must find her. No matter what she did, she is not to be harmed in any way, shape or form. You must make sure of that. Um, I mean, sure, but like, so if Sia, so the blackmailers and the person who hired the man from Center are the same person or, or the same group of people. And from what you're trying to say, Siana, your sister is one of those groups of people. So not only is she stealing your stuff, but she's also helping kill people or, or hiring a vampire to kill people. I'm, it's all very complicated still, but like, wouldn't she be working with vampires then? Because I have lots of questions, obviously. <laughs> I'm just trying to think it all through. But sure, I'll s maybe we can fix your sister if it is your sister, because it could entirely not be your sister. Like, they could have tortured your sister for information and then killed her. That, that could have happened. But any anyway, I'll see to it. I'll find her if she's there. I hope you do. I very much wish to talk to her, sister to sister. Your Grace, Geralt, I'd like to introduce... Regis! What a surprise! I had no idea you were in Beauclair. And this is... Uh, my very dear friend, Detlaf van der Eretain, an arrival from Nazaire. We are lending our combined resources to the Witch's Hunt. <laughs> ah, yes. Splendid. But why are you here at Oriana's? They came to pay me a surprise visit, so I invited Regis in for a glass of wine. We've known each other for... Ooh, ages, literally. Witcher, I hear you know Regis too. Even that you are friends. Yeah, um, he brought Detloff. Detloff looks much better when he's not all vamped out. Uh, is, if Oriana, you know, she hesitated, oh, ages, is, is Oriana a vampire too? Because that would be interesting. Um. Yes, all, all of that, all of that is true. We, we are friends, right? Few I can rely on like I can on Regis. Kinda hoping he thinks the same of me. Curious. It seems opposites really do attract. Don't be fooled, dear. Geralt has many merits. He merely hides them from the world very diligently. Mm-hmm. You said you're both aiding him with his contract. It involves the Beast of Beauclair, I suspect. Master Witcher, maybe you could satisfy my curiosity. What's it like going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a monster, knowing you've only two options, to kill or be killed? Despite what you might have heard, I don't lunge at every monster I see sword in hand. Talking gets the job done for some. Hmm. I wonder what a monster might have to say to you. It might want to apologize. My word. What might a monster wish to apologize to a witcher? For killing. Though at times there is no choice when loved ones are at risk and require protection. Yeah, j just like just like humans. Let's go with that one. Same as humans. Put them in that situation, they'll kill too. You understand this. It must be why you and Regis are friends. If I understand you correctly, you would rather help a monster than kill it. If possible, yeah. Or at least try. Enough about the Witcher trade for now. Regis mentioned you come from Nazaire. I spent time there as a child. Fond memories? It was wonderful. I was positively entranced by the land's fashions. <laughs> Deep cut dresses I found most fascinating. I believe we're running short on wine. I should go to the cellar, bring another bottle. Let me go. Will I help, Regis? Know your wine a lot better than I know mine. We shall return forthwith. Uh-huh. Leaving the Beast of Beauclair with these two ladies? Is that the brightest of ideas, Geralt? An exceptional conversation, don't you think? Vampires, a witcher, and the Duchess of Toussaint? My, my. Highly exceptional, Regis. Wanted to talk to you in private. You crazy bringing Detloff here? Geralt, uh, allow me to explain. Uh -huh. No, let me explain. He's dangerous, and you are going to watch him. But that is precisely what I'm doing. Detlaf believes you'll succeed in your task, 
and he'll not need to kill anymore. That is, not until he gets his hands on the men who kidnapped his Renner. This is so tense filled right now. <laughs> and I love it. Like the music to go along with it. And Detloff right there. It's gravelly voice. It's all very tense filled. Anyway, uh, Oriana, how, how do you know her? Is she a vampire too? I see vampires everywhere, right? <laughs> Oriana, is she really your friend? Can she be trusted? Uh, I met her years ago, before I met you, and before she settled in Beauclair. We'd not seen one another in... Uh, oh, uh, I can't begin to tell you in how long. But I shall tell you all about her some other day. Right. So seriously, just a coincidence you stopping by? It's not a coincidence. It's not. Guessing it's no accident you two stopped by. It would be quite some coincidence indeed. No, a dutiful little bird told us. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, know where the blackmailers are. Or I know where the blackmailers are, rather. Now listen close. Manage to learn where the blackmailers are. They're based at Duntine Castle. That's splendid news. If they are there, Renna must be there as well. Duchess expects we'll find her long-lost sister there, too. Thing is, she might be involved. Could be behind the blackmailing. Do you mean to say your task now is to extract two women from the castle? Mean to say we can't breathe a word of this to Dedloff, who wants revenge above all else. Geralt, you must trust me. I've got a way with... No, Regis. Can't risk it. Gotta keep Dedloff here while I go to Duntine. Alone? Alone. That way I can make sure neither woman will come to any harm. I hope you know what you're doing. Fine. I shall see to Detloff. Good luck, my friend. Splendidly, Detlaf. Ah, oh, I'm grateful you brought back those memories. You're back. It took you long enough. Contrary to what common folk believe, choosing a wine is not nearly as easy as it might seem. <laughs> Especially a wine to be served to two exquisite ladies. Regis, gallant as ever. I regret all the more that I shan't finish this second bottle with you. Duty calls. Your grace, always a pleasure. I thank you for your help. It's been invaluable. Geralt, will you see me out? You have exceptional friends. This Detlaf, an intriguing man to say the least. Ah. Uh. A tr intriguing's a word for it, I suppose. He tell you much about himself? Don't know him too well. He say much about himself? Not much, but I've a good sense of the true nature of those I meet. I'd not survive a week at court otherwise. So what's his? Sensitive. Sad. He carries within him the weight of a terrible tragedy. He is a good man, but lost. Which is why he comes across as grim. Interesting evening all around. Yes. Didn't expect the evening to end like this. Neither did I. But I have not drawn you out for a romantic stroll. I wish to make certain you know what you are to do. Mm-hmm. Gotta go to Duntine. I've decided my guardsmen will support you. You will meet them at Count de la Croix's Mill. It stands along the San Retour River, near the Cockatrice Inn. Captain de la Tour and his men will await you there at midnight. You shall storm the castle together. Okay. Beast like that probably has no one to split a bottle. So we have a Sienna entry, we finished a quest, Detloff updated, Emil updated, Oriana is new. The Butcher of Bluffigan called to be the savior of Tucson. And Man from Sintra is also 
uh, completed and capture the castle. So never many, so many new things. Can I go back in here and talk to people? Of course I can't. Of course I can't. I was like, I want to talk to Oriana. I want to talk to Detloff, and I want to talk to all these people. So let's see. Um, it should be relatively close to the top. Here we go. So a man from Sintra. It seemed as if matters had come to a head and the Witcher would finally face he who had for some time succeeded in slinking from Geralt's grip like a snake. The Sintrian was to appear at a soiree hosted by Mandragora, an exclusive club that brought together all manner of artists who thought very highly of themselves. As I see it, they were a host of individuals whom nature had denied any significant talent. Thus, they opted not to produce more and better work, but instead to whimper into the ears of wealthy patrons, a practice for which I have always had the utmost contempt. But back to the Centrian, Geralt and Anna Henrietta decided they would attend the soiree, soiree and nab this scoundrel dog. And we failed, of course. So the Witcher was largely unaccustomed to battles in which lies flattery and the occasional petty insult served as the combatant's chief arms. Yet with the aid of Honorietta, much better acquainted with this type of combat, mean retorts being her weapon of choice, he managed to blend into the members of Beauclair's Bohem, 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 maybe, <laughs> who had assembled and mingle largely unnoticed. Together, the Duchess and the Witcher searched for the Centrian. He had reportedly arrived for the evening with the famed singer Cecilia Bellant on his arm. Alas, poor Cecilia was not had not known the evening would end in tragedy for her. Geralt found her, her throat cut just moments before, and set off in pursuit of her murderer. The Centrian had appeared that evening to steal the heart of Toussaint, a ducal jewel in the possession of Oriana, the soiree's host. The Witcher could not interrogate the thief as he had died tragically while attempting to make off with his loot. Oh yeah, I gotta... Didn't he jump out or something? I need to kind of wander around and see if I can find where he landed jumped out of window. I'm sorry, I have a long list of notes that I have to work on today. Um, so yet he had left a clue leading to Duntine Castle, which the Witcher made his next destination. Yet the assault on this fort, manned by many knights, I mean, there weren't that many outside. I just couldn't get in. But anyway, might not prove easy. Ironically, Anna Henrietta made this so by giving Geralt an additional objective. You see, the thief had first obtained a barrel of ducal wine and then attempted to pinch a jewel that had in the past belonged to Sianna, Anna Henrietta's sister. The fact of the fact of said sister's existence surprised me as much as it must surprise you, my readers, who knew Anna Henrietta had a sister. Well, I did, kind of. Um, from the books that I read. And what's more, one every one even more fiery than the Duchess herself. These facts caused the Duchess to suspect Sianna could herself be a Duntine. So she ordered the Witcher to go there and find her. As if these revelations were not enough, the evening ended in a philosophically complex scene featuring the Duchess of Toussaint, several ancient higher vampires, and a grumpy Witcher shared at table. The conversation proved both lively and varied, spanning the matters ranging from the intricacies of combating monsters to the propriety of wearing deep cut formal dresses. <laughs> yeah, lo lo lots of things. So Oriana, during the soiree organized by the Mandragora, Geralt met Oriana, a valued patroness to many local artists. There was something about this woman that made most who met her feel somehow ill at ease. She could not break the Witcher's iron hard self composure, of course, but she did give him the impression she was no normal aristocrat, and his impressions were usually spot on. I'm going with she's a higher vampire, too. That's, that's my conspiracy theory. So, anyway, um, Sienna. Sylvia Anna, a lovely name, don't you think? This beauty should have come as no surprise given it's the name of the daughter of a duke and the sister of a duchess. Yet the famed Sianna, as her intimates called her, met was not as beautiful as might have been suspected for one so well born. Though as it turns out, she had in truth been born rather inopportunely. She came into this world during an eclipse and thus fell victim to the panic surrounding the curse of the black sun, which was said to affect young girls from ruling families birthed in similar circumstances. I feel like that seems reminiscent of something like from the tv show or something was it vaguely mentioned in the base game i'm not i'm not sure it's it's fine it's not the end of the world which was said to affect young girls from ruling families birth in similar circumstances though Geralt had serious doubts whether this curse truly existed many claimed it did it caused horrible mutations which filled his victims with cruelty and a desire to kill sianna's parents certainly seemed to be among the believers in the curse which is kind of sad because 
what if there was nothing wrong? They, they tormented her as a child for no reason and probably made her angry for no reason. Anyway, for they deemed her too dangerous to be allowed to remain in court and forced her into exile. I mean, she didn't make some poor life choices. Somebody died because of it. Not, not excusing that, but like, anyway. Sienna then fled to Nazare and soon for all intents and purposes dropped off the face of the planet. So then we had a meal had an update. Let's go all the way down the bottom. And the pursuit of the Black Mirrors, Geralt and Anna Henrietta found themselves at a private residence used for meetings of the Mandragora, an exclusive club for the Bo Bohema of Toussaint. The residence owner turned out to be a woman named Oriana, to the witcher's great displeasure. Later that evening, they were joined by Regis in the company of Detloff. In the conversation that ensued, Geralt gathered Regis and Oriana were old friends. The entire conversation had a rather surreal nature, seeing as how the Duchess had no idea she was speaking to the dreaded beast himself. I know, that's going to be awkward because it's going to it's gonna come up later, right? <laughs> Let's be honest, it's going to come up later. I feel like she's going to be like off with Geralt's head or something something. Anyway, its key outcome was the conclusion that the blackmailers were holding Detloff's lover at a place known as Duntine. Geralt pulled Regis aside and they conferred briefly. Geralt was firmly against revealing this information to Detloff. To his thinking, this could lead to serious trouble. Yes, I must say I agree with the Witcher's reasoning. When a higher vampire loses his self-control, trouble always ensues. Bloody trouble. Yes. And Detloff. He looks much, much better as in his human form but i imagine most higher vampires probably do much less scary <laughs> very intimidating i'm rambling so let's see when Geralt went to oriana's residence with the duchess he was certain detlef was somewhere far away safe in regis's care he was wrong as he found out while while watching both vampires stroll into the room his surprise quickly turning to irritation. In the conversation which followed, the Duchess had no idea she was, in fact, talking to the murderer she so wished to have slain. In fact, the Beast of Beauclair even came off as charming. Afterwards, Geralt set off for Duntine, but not before first extracting a promise from Regis to keep Detloff at a safe distance this time. Yeah, I feel like Detloff just needs to kind of stay out of it. So capture the capture, capture the castle. Meet Damien at Count Delacroix's mill after midnight. Which is where? Okay. Is that the mill? He's one of the victims, right? I wonder if that's the place that I was wondering if I could go to. Well, um, we're not going to do that right now. We're going to, of course, do other things. I kind of want to finish my quests and exploration before I continue on with the game, but but we'll see how that all works out. But I do need to make my way over to this question mark because it's the one I forgot to do. And it looks like the nearest fast travel point is probably the Castle Dacia Abandoned Estate. And I also need to do a couple other things. I have a note to go back to the the salon to investigate a, a haircut. And it's been on my list for a while and I... I I just haven't had a chance to do it. And I also do need to still, still go, maybe go back to the caves with the the Craig Witch or something like that. What's going on here? It's random thugs just hanging out. The Guardian Nobleman. Okay. Anyways, the hair salon is over here. You're in Beauclair, see? I liked you from the start. Every witcher I've known has been a swell lad. Thanks. Greetings and welcome. Okay. Um. Where's. What's his name? He's not. Where is he? Where's the guy who cuts my hair? Oh, there we go. Oh, that's a noble woman. Is it too early in the day? It's too early in the day. That is why. <laughs> I'm like, where is the guy who cuts people's hair? I forget his name. That could only mean trouble. Got quite a packed salon. Greetings once more, Master Witch. I'm here for a trip. They were here before you were even open. I'd like a new do. So, Queen's Page Boy. That was the new one. That is awful. 
That is so awful. That is so terrible. I can't. Um, shaved head and a ponytail, I think. Was it that one? I think. Yes, it was that one. Oh my god. <laughs> Thanks. So that was terrible. I shall cling to my scissors and comb as long as I've strength left in my fingers. Great, I'm very happy for you, sir. <laughs> so, I think of all of them, that was the worst haircut ever. All right, so that's one of the things I wanted to do today. So the other thing was to go to Castle Dacia, then run slash swim over to the next question mark. This one over here. Okay, so I'm gonna fast travel over here and then meet you as I get closer to this question mark over over there. And here we are, fairly close to this question mark, and I realize I left Beauclair without looking for the the thief's body, and I need to I feel the need to try and do that. So <laughs> um well I'll try and remember to go back there next time. But it looks like there are a bunch of drowners over here. I'm guessing guarded treasure. That's my guess. Hidden treasure? Hidden treasure. Hello, drowners. Well, that wasn't so bad. Where's the red loot at? Hidden treasure? No, maybe? Oh, there's the red loot. Orders on stained paper and a key. So Timon, hold off on fishing out that cargo. One of you drowning is enough. I've sent Go and Doe to you. Before those lads join our haunts, they were pearl divers in a penal colony in Gamera. They've had an easier time bringing up the chest. They'll have an easier time bringing up the chest. Once you get the goods, return to the Caraberta Woods. There you'll join Americ Tapeworm's crew. Ew, Tapeworm. Lovely name. Together, you're to pick those academics' camps clean. Tents, pallets, food supplies. You're to take all that to Mont Crane. We could do with a bit of comfort at the Cas Castel Grappen Academy's expense. Just try not to sink any more boats. Filibert. Waiting for go and dough. Okay, well, I need to go and search for the sunken boat. Let's finish looting here first. Darn, a bunch of evil bandits are dead, died from drowners. I, I feel like I should feel bad, but I just don't, you know? So where is this at? Oh, it's very nearby. Let's save. And let me put on some killer whale before we go any further. I'll uh, just consume it. That should be fine. And let's get out my crossbow. We need to finish killing him, please. Thank you. Search for the sunken boat. Well, there looks like the sunken boat. But that's Buckthorn. Hmm, I, I don't like the swimming in the game. I just don't, there we go. Supplies, invoice, diagram, Bellhaven blade. Invoice. So invoice of receipt for the below listed equipment delivered to the Imperial Academy at Castel Grappin Archaeological Expedition led by Professor Noel Ivor. I feel like that's one of the professors we ran into when dealing with some ruins way earlier in the DLC. So name of the equipment, Harlage Drake. We have fr fritage carts, 
Expedition tents, sleeping pallets, blankets, tool crates, food crates, and wine crates. Acknowledge receipt of the above-mentioned equipment, Professor Noel Ivor, signature of person materially responsible, Luca Epp Fran, Jr., Quartermaster Clerk, Chancellery of the Imperial Academy of Castel Grappin. Lots and lots and lots of words. Okay, so let me look for that quest text update. Okay, so the quest was waiting for Go and Doe, and it said, while unheroically roaming the back country that was the Champ de Soles, our heroic witcher came upon an encampment overrun by monsters. The beasts were feeding on the remains of the camp for camp's former inhabitants. Geralt dispatched the bloodthirsty filth and prompted by curiosity searched the camp. He found an interesting letter. The bandits had previously ambushed a group of scholars returning from an expedition to the Caraberta woods. They got their just desserts soon after when they their boat laden with loot sank. It now rested somewhere at the bottom of the Sans Retour River. Combining work with pleasure, Geralt plunged into the relaxing, refreshing water of the Sans Retour. He quickly found the sunken boat and emptied the treasure chest hidden, hidden within it. Okay, well, I'm going to head back to Beauclair and I'm going to attempt to try to find this a uh, body of this thief. And um, if I find it, I will pick you back up there. If not, we'll probably, I'm gonna probably head up to this area because I would like to finish all of this before we start back on the main quest. So I'll meet you somewhere momentarily. And here I am, finally <laughs> meeting you somewhere else. Well, finally for me, not so much for you. I looked and looked and looked and looked and looked to see if I could find that thief's body. And I, I finally gave up. I was this was where the mandragora was at and i ran all up and down along here and down here a little bit and either i w i should have gone there right away or i couldn't find it but i can't find the thief's body i i'll have to look between now and the next time i play this to see if it's online anywhere like a specific spot to go to but i didn't want to waste any more time today and i figure i can always do it next time around it's not the end of the world so here we are out at the trading post for the quest mutual of beauclair's wild kingdom now i'm not sure i feel like i picked this up off of a notice board ages ago but we were supposed to meet the merchants at the camp which i'm guessing was the trading post camp and we had been over here to make our way up to this area i think for a uh witcher gear diagram and i kind of just skipped through it so here we are back to actually finish it so the last update was that i needed to use my witcher senses to investigate the campsite because clearly something bad happened to these merchants that i was supposed to meet for reasons that i can't recall but i'm sure it will come i'm sure it will come to me right it, it'll it'll come back so the camp looks completely destroyed, no doubt, by bandits. Blood of the fresh variety. Oh. Monster attack was recent. Not bandits, monsters. I was going to guess monsters because... Or I guess bandits because there should be one more haunts for us to deal with. What does this say over here? What does it say? Beware the white terror. Danger zone. Do not enter. Any loss of life of, or property will be compensated by Count Borges de Salvarez. So I feel like I remember seeing that poster when I was doing some of the, maybe I wasn't over here for Witcher Contract, but I was over here for some of the Wine Wars stuff. Man, bled to death. Big beast inflicted these wounds, clear from the claw marks. Must have a toothy smile too, judging by what ripped his throat open. Lovely. Draconid, gotta be. Maybe a basilisk? Except these prints don't belong to any variety I know. Just a little different. Area's dangerous. I'd say there's a basilisk nesting around here. It'd be wise to remain at some distance. Yes, I'm familiar with the matter. And quite proud to say a basilisk does nest here. I look after it personally. Look after it? It's not exactly a pet. Beasts murdering folk who come through here. Just a minute. It does not murder those who do not trespass upon its territory. You post those warnings? Indeed. To prevent anyone from coming to any harm. Well, a lot of good they did. <laughs> Got a freshly mangled corpse right here. Most likely a merchant, the poor bloke. Just today, I learned two traders had chosen this route despite the signs. I came as quick as I could to warn them. Too late, alas. I've instructed my servants. 
They shall take the body, return it to the family with a generous sum as recompense. Uh, that's really not, like, money isn't going to make up for the loss of a family member, you jerk. You keep a monster as a pet. What is, what is wrong with you? Families of the victims, you pay them off? Hmm. Pay the victims' families compensation? Why? These lands have been my family's for decades, granted to us by Duchess Ademarta. Beyond them, the basilisk ventures not, hunts not, it does not kill or destroy. Provided it is not provoked. Yet if it does destroy, if it kills, I compensate all for the loss from my own coffers. Hmm, your coffers. Got a store of sons and husbands in there yeah. to compensate for those shredded by your beast? Naturally, I cannot revive the dead, but I do make generous restitution to their loved ones. Just last summer, I paid a leather tooler's widow 800 crones, this unfortunate merchant's family, to be duly indemnified as well. Uh, <laughs> claim this is the last surviving basilisk plan to stick to that story? Yeah. Claim this to be the last surviving basilisk? How do you figure? The last of this subspecies. Their population was much larger at one time, see? Before the beech forests were felled. Mean to suggest a direct correlation between beechwood forest density and basilisk populations? <laughs> Indirect, I prefer to contend. Beechwood forests are the chief habitat of roe deer, you see. In turn, a staple of the basilisk diet. When roe deer grew scarce, basilisks made humans their staple food. Enter the witchers. And thus, we've come to this one last specimen. It's a female. As recently as last year, we still had two. But Yocast's mate passed on, alas. Yocast? Should she not have a name? My father dubbed her in honor of my dear departed mother. Yocast was brooding then. Two eggs that she cast from her nest, alas, when the male perished. Uh, is this like the guy trying to tame like monsters for like an aerial fighting force? I, I just I feel like this is a very poor decision. Who are you? Fess up. Who exactly are you? And how'd you develop such an interest in the beast? Count Borges, happy to be of service. As to the beast, well, this subspecies is our dynastic symbol. The Desalfareses have for centuries signed with the Regulus Platinum. As family legend has it, a female of the species rescued an ancestor, a boy at the time, from a burning building. She took the tyke back to her nest, where she fed him as if he were one of her own youngsters. Malarkey, to be sure, <laughs> but beautiful malarkey it is. All right, well, this basilisk, do you know where I might find it? Where's the basilisk nesting? Any idea? Of course I have an idea, but you don't really expect me to tell you. Those are not toy swords. I know your intentions. Find it myself, then. Easy to track with its distinct paw prints. Mentioned two merchants, so I might also look for the other corpse. about the second victim. I mean, like, a monster is not a pet. Poor man. A horrid death. Obviously. Like, am I gonna loot everything? Yeah, yeah, I am. <laughs> I, what, what is going on? <laughs> so merchants came out here to, you know, be merchants and they ignored the signs of your, like, beast. Cause, well, they shouldn't have done that. I'll, I'll agree with you there. But like, then your beast killed them, the beast that you just keep as a pet and hope that it doesn't hurt anybody. I mean, it could totally turn on you, sir. Basilisk scales are usually thicker, not nearly so fine. Could be more sensitive to fire, this one. Alas, it is true. Your cast has a terrible fear of fire. She's a highly sensitive creature. Rid your mind of any thought to kill her. You would destroy the last of a species. 
I mean, I feel bad about it, but like, again, it's hurting people, but I'm, I'm kind of wishy-washy on my thoughts on that one. Strange. These burn marks. Beasts venom make them. Subspecies must be highly toxic. It is so indeed. A wound from a sterling basilisk festers long. Need to brew a potion that'll neutralize that. Mm-hmm. Well, I have some potions. It might. Busted barrels. Content spilled all over. Must have been tannin in there. Used to treat leather. Beast smashed the barrels. That's how the scent got on the scale. Yo Coco is so very curious. Strong scents especially intrigue her. The barrels, they must have drawn her in. Drawn her to the caravan. Thought you Busted said... barrels slimed with venom. All marks of an attack. Basilisk must have caught the second victim here. Anyway, got two scents. Venom and tannin. Ought to be enough to track the beast. Why track her at all? Your cast is protected. Her death would forever destabilize the ecosystem. Who knows what would happen? I see unforeseeable consequences down the line. Simply refrain from provoking her. Harm her not, and she too will leave you untouched. I've long suspected they do it on purpose. Sent their goods. They seek to lure the basilisk to destroy their wares. It allows them to demand compensation from their assurers. What? You think they came out here to scam you out of money? And is her name Iokast or Yokoko? You keep changing your mind. It's it's very confusing. All right, let's... My items are enhanced. Great. Did I empty my bags? Okay, I'm fine. <laughs> There's that one, and some more notices to stay away. Okay, and there is your scent that we need to follow. Well, let's follow it for a little ways. Are you going to stalk me all the way there? I, I mean, I'm sorry, sir. I don't think you have this basilisk under control, and people should be allowed to pass through your woods without being murdered. Although I should, if I've, I'm, like I said, I'm very wishy-washy with my theories because I'm kind of letting Detloff off, sort of. I mean, I haven't officially yet, but like, I want to see how that all plays out. This one, I just feel like it's a mindless beast. Sort of, maybe. We'll see. We'll see how it all pans out. He really is going to just follow me and try to convince me not to harm his Yocasta or whatnot. Odors dispersed. Seems to be everywhere. Basilisk must be high in the sky. Blood stains. Clear as day. Where am I now? In relation to where I was. Making my way there. And here is where there is a Witcher gear quest starting. And then where's my other quest? Night for Hire is still to be done. Coin doesn't sink. That's back... Over there, I skipped that one. Oh, well, we'll go back to that one. Anyway, let's try and focus. <laughs> oh, there we go. Sense perceptible again. Monster den behind us that needs to be dealt with. Um. Is that the same place, maybe? Does not look like it. Oh no. Just as I expected. Second victim, but relatively unscathed. Basilisk must have been dragging him back to its nest for later. Dropped him for some reason. Wonder why. Hmm. Cooper's Guild contract. Dear Gaston, in reply to your question regarding the planned transport route for the Barrels of Tin, and allow me to confirm the official itinerary supported by the Guild still goes through the lands belonging to Count de Salvaris. The board sees no reason to deviate from our traditional path. The Count has pledged to cover all eventual damages caused by the Great White Terror, so even in the case of the destruction of the entire cargo, the Guild will suffer no monetary losses. He's still allowing them to go through, even though he knows that it could get them killed. What? What a tool. Okay, before I pause for today, let's read another book. I am going to pause before we get any further. 
Um, because I, I feel like it's going to take a, a bit to finish tracking down this monster. So the history of SS, let's read this one real quick. So SS, often considered one of the chief treasures of the people of Toussaint, is best known of the wines cultivated in that region. It is hard to determine when exactly the first barrels of SS were matured, but we can surmise it must have been around the time of the first human forays into the Duchy's present lands. What is certain is that this wine truly gained fame only during the reign of Duchess Adela Marta, who held SS in near divine esteem and for that reason bestowed upon Castel Ravello the privilege of being the official ducal vineyard. She also preserved, reserved a special place in the cellars of Beauclair Palace for SS, and to this day, two barrels of every vintage are ceremoniously deposited on those shelves. The tapping of any of them is by order of the ducal edict, vino sanctus est, punishable by death through dragging behind a team of horses over wine. I mean, they take their wine very seriously here, I guess. <laughs> what else is over here that still needs to be looked at? Huh. Well, I'll get to that later. But anyway, I am going to pause here today. Tomorrow, we are going to pick back up here and maybe finish Mutual of Beauclair's Wild Kingdom. Try and probably go back and pick up this monster den, or, or at least clear out the den and work on the quest that was down here at the Coronado Vineyard and then do some exploring and get through what I can get through and go from there. So as always, thank you so very much for watching. Please do keep yourselves safe and I will see you again tomorrow with another new Witcher 3 video.